All right, so we are in week two of our series, Made for Mondays. Now, if, if this is your first time with us, you're like, yeah, I don't think that's true. Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we talked last week, and we began in the Garden of Eden, because you've got to start there when you're talking about changing perspective on things. And As we begin in the book of Genesis, we see the very, very first book of the Bible introduces God to us. This is in the beginning, God. And the very first thing that it says that God does is he creates. He's a worker. He begins the process of creation, which is work. And then he creates Adam, and he goes, okay, Adam, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place you in the garden. I'm going to place you in the garden to work it, to take care of it. And so we see that as God creates, God is a worker, and then God creates Adam. He creates Adam to be a worker. And the, the idea of finding true fulfillment and purpose in our life cannot be found apart from some type of work. And now, work has all sorts of various forms, right? You could be working and not get paid for. You could be a volunteer. You could be retired. You could be a mom. Uh, you could be a stay-at-home dad, whatever. And, and you're like, well, I don't get paid for that. Probably couldn't afford you. Just be honest, right? Um, and so work comes in all sorts of forms and shapes. And so it's not just kind of working that nine-to-five type of thing. But in reality, so many of us have bought into the idea that we are working for the weekends, right? We're, we're, when, when Friday afternoon rolls around, we're like, yeah, finally I get to live. And we think that that's what it's all about. When God goes, no, 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 no. The truth is something very, very different. The truth is that we actually were created for work, and when we pull work out of it, we tend to not do as well. You, any of you, I don't want, to, I want you to raise your hands because it's probably somebody close to you if you know this. Maybe you've seen somebody that like, man, they worked really hard their whole life. Maybe they worked for 40, 50 years and, and they did all this stuff and they worked really, really hard. And then they decided that they were going to retire and they sit around. They don't do anything. And maybe like, oh, I'm just going to go play golf. And that's all they ever do. Isn't it amazing how quickly they age? And so many, so many people, when they do that, like within a handful of years, they, they pass away. They're no longer with us because they've lost a lot of their purpose. They just kind of sit around and watch the grass grow. And God goes, that's not what you're made for. That is not how I created you. Work is a part of your purpose. Work is what God has called you to do. Now, we're going to begin this morning. I'm going to share with you uh, a universal principle. Are you ready? I know it's going to blow you away. Some of you are like, I have never heard that before. I've never thought about that before. Here it is. You ready? Work is often hard. I know. It's shocking, right? Some of you are like, what? I get up every Monday morning and I'm so pumped and I come home from work after working eight hours staring at a computer screen and dealing with other people and a bad boss and I am energized. I am jazzed. It fills me up, right? We don't think that way because the reality is, is work is hard. But if God has called us to work, then anytime we do work, we should be giving it 100%. We should be giving it absolutely everything that we have. So the question is, if God created work and he created us to work, and that's a part of our purpose, that's a part of, I'm going to move that back because I'm going to trip on that, it, all that stuff, then why is work hard? Because you would think if God created it for us, then he would create it so that it was easy and desirable for us to do it. Why is work hard? Well, we have to go back to Genesis because Genesis tells us why work is hard, why work is difficult, why we look at work and instead of wanting to do it, we want to find ways to not do it. And it's found in the book of Genesis chapter 3. And to give you the context of what happens here, God creates everything. He puts Adam in the garden to work it. The first job that he gives Adam is, I want you to give every single animal a name. And so he names every single animal. He gets to the last animal and he looks at God or God looks at him. We don't know exactly how it transpired, but there wasn't somebody like Adam that Adam could have connection with, which again, is one of the reasons we understand that connection and connecting with other human beings is so important to a part of our purpose. That's what God has 
has called us to do. It's the reason that solitary confinement is one of the greatest punishments that you can give another human being because we desire for connection with other people. And so God puts Adam to sleep, takes a part of his rib, creates Eve, brings Eve to Adam. Adam's like, yes, this is fantastic. And so they begin their relationship with one another. But God puts in the Garden of Eden these two trees. It's the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God says, you can eat of every single tree in the garden. In fact, the the tree of life as well. But do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the day that you eat of it, you will die. Adam tells Eve, I think he adds a little bit to it. It's like, we can't touch it either. Just stay away from it. And one day, Adam and Eve are wandering through the Garden of Eden together, and a serpent slithers out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and is like, hey, this tree is pretty awesome, isn't it? Again, I just want to share with you, if you're ever walking outside, a snake begins a conversation with you. Just run. If you have a gun, shoot it, then run. Okay, that's just, that's what, that's, I, listen, I hate snakes and I'm verified. The Bible says I should. Okay, so, so there you go. And, and the Bible says it talks to Eve. It, it usurps Adam's authority as the one that, that's supposed to be, you know, be a part of that and the leader. And he usurps the authority and goes straight to Eve. And Eve listens to it and goes, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. And the Bible says that she takes the fruit, she eats it. Then she gives it to her husband who was with her. And that moment, their eyes were open. They could see that they were naked. They were ashamed. They ran and hid from God. God shows up and goes, guys, where are you? It wasn't, and I always love this, by the way, if you're reading the Bible, and God asks a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He knows the answer already. He's trying to get you to realize that you need to answer that question and go, oh, okay, well, that sucks. Okay. And so God asks the question, where are you? And Adam steps out in his failed fig leaf, and he goes, well... We were naked, so we were ashamed. He's like, well, who told you you were naked? He's like, well, we might have eaten of the tree that you told us not to eat of. And then God goes, well, okay, that's a problem. Because instead of choosing the path of life, the tree of life, you chose the path of disobedience. And when you disobey, there's always discipline and punishment that comes with that. And so in Genesis chapter 3, God's beginning to kind of dole out the punishment, letting people know what happens. And I want you to see this. This is Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And to the man he said, and I want you to notice what the sin is. Since you listened to your wife. (laughs) Guys, you should get that one tattooed. I'm just saying... The first sin, Adam listened to his wife. That was the sin right there, honey. Now listen, here's what's funny. Since that point in time, you should always listen to your wife. I'm just saying, that's that's just. So since you listened to your wife and you ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat. Now listen to what he says. The ground is cursed because of you. Now this is important because why did God put Adam in the garden? To what? To work it. His job was to work the ground, to cultivate it, to grow it, to make it become all that it could be. God gave him all the base ingredients and said, make it great. And so Adam was tasked with this job. And now the very thing that he is supposed to be doing is now going to be working against him instead of with him. So the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you, eat, though you will eat of its grain. And by the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. This is so important to understand. Work isn't cursed. The process of work was cursed. Work and the end result is still a blessing from God. But to be able to get to that blessing now, you've got to do hard work. You go, I don't know. I work. I don't feel like it's a blessing. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But God has created work for you and I to be a blessing in our lives. But because of sin... Now, the process of getting to that blessing is hard. 
So sin entered the world, and we know whose fault that is. I'm just kidding. Those of you are like, is he really going to blame women for all of this? No, I'm just, I'm, I'm teasing. That, uh, because it was Adam. He even says to Adam, it's your fault, dummy. Why did you do this? Why did you let this happen? And so it brings this problem, all of these things that are now accompanied work, and it makes work difficult. And because work is hard, here's what we do. If work was easy and we could go through the process of work and get the blessing, this is what we would do. We'd lean into it. We're like, yeah, I'm all about that because I would love to get that blessing. But because work is hard and now work is pushing against us, our natural reaction is, is if we get pushed back, we lean away from it. And so God goes, listen, if you want the blessing, you've got to lean into work even though it's hard You've got to lean into it so that you can achieve the blessing in the end. Because if you lean away from it and you do just enough to get by, then the blessing you're going to receive on the other end is a just enough blessing. And you and I, listen, you don't want a just enough blessing. Because God says his blessing for us is that he wants to bless us. He wants to fill our cup to overflowing and pouring out. That's what God says. If you love Jesus Christ, that's the kind of blessing he wants to bring into your life. And you're not going to experience that through work if you're always leaning away from work. So you've got to lean into it. You've got to give it everything you have. You've got to give it 100%. You've got to stop seeing work as evil. Work isn't cursed. It may feel like it sometimes, but it's the process of work that's hard. Now, because work is hard, you may be asking questions like the ancient king, King Solomon, in Ecclesiastes asks. Now, the book of Ecclesiastes, if you're not familiar with it, Ecclesiastes is, is kind of like Solomon's diary. Right? He's writing kind of like in a stream of consciousness, a stream of thought. It's near the end of his life. And he's like, listen, I want to share with you everything that I've learned going through life. And he begins with talking about all the things in the world that he sees, that he feels are, don't have a really great purpose or they're meaningless. And, and the big question that he's trying to ask is, what is the meaning of life? Why do we exist? If you're like, man, I want to read that, I encourage you to read that, but don't stop halfway through because literally he's writing all of his thoughts and he's like, this sucks and this is horrible, this is terrible. And he's working through this process. And so in Ecclesiastes 3, he gets to work and I want you to see, he asks a question that so many of us probably ask on a regular basis. What do people really get for all their hard work? He's like, what do people get? You know, you do all this hard work and what do you, what do you get for it? And he ponders that, and he, he talks about how people get taken advantage of at their work. You ever been taken advantage of at your work? He ponders the idea of, of these people who work their whole lives, and they finally get to the point where they feel like they have enough, and right before they retire, they die. He goes on, he goes talking about people who, who are underpaid and underappreciated and overwhelmed, and he goes, what's the point? He even says at one point in time, he says, work is a meaningless endeavor. Why bother? Because, again, stream of thought. He's thinking through all this stuff going, how, how in the world is this something that God would want to be a part of our lives if we're truly following after God? And again, if you read through Ecclesiastes, he begins to answer those questions later on until we get to chapter 9. So it takes him six chapters to get here, okay? Some of us are like, yeah, we, can, we totally get that. So he gets to, to chapter 9. And he gives us, he goes, this, now, now I understand it. And he gives this answer to why work is important. He says, enjoy life with the wife you love all the days of your fleeting life, which has been given to you under the sun all your fleeting days. So he's like, listen, just remember, you have no idea what tomorrow's going to bring. You may not even get to tomorrow. So enjoy every moment. Enjoy the relationships that you have. Be engaged with other people because you never know what's going to happen next. And listen to this. For that is your portion in life and in your struggle under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with what? All your strength. Whatever your lot in life, whatever your work looks like right now, you do it with everything you have. You give 100%. And he goes, why? Because there is no work, 
no planning, no knowledge, or no wisdom in Sheol where you're going. In other words, you're going to die soon. You're like, no, no, I'm like 25 years old. You know what? A day, the Bible says the day in the, in the eyes of God is like a thousand years to us. It's fleeting. Like, we don't know what's going to happen next. He says, listen, so, so whatever you do, what, whatever you find your hands to do, whatever you have, whatever work you have, do it with everything you have. Because when it's all over with, you're not going to be able to accomplish anything else. So see work as a blessing from God to accomplish things and enjoy life. Just enjoy every little bit of it. Don't, don't be like pushing stuff away. Solomon concludes that work is a part of God's purpose for each and every one of our lives. And even more so when we lean into our work, when we give 100%, it actually improves our ability to enjoy life. Now, you got to know that I buy into that. Let me just... You ever done a project? I know, like, we, we laugh, Ray, Ray, my neighbor and I, we, we laugh about, you know, projects where we live. We're like, it's not projects. No, it's, it's just work. Uh, but, so, so here's the thing, and I want you to listen to this. This is so cool. You ever done a project you weren't getting paid for, probably nobody really appreciated but you, but when you were done, you looked at it and you're like, yeah, I did that. Right? You know, maybe, maybe it was some construction project. Maybe you, you made something. Maybe you did, you know, I don't know. You, you did a, I don't know, you made, I don't, I don't know, whatever. You did something, right? And you looked and you're like, man, I did that. I accomplished that. Oh, it always reminds me of, of the film Castaway with Tom Hanks, right? You remember, you, you remember seeing that? He's been trying to make fire and his hands are all blistered and finally he makes fire. And he's like, I have made fire. That's what you feel like when you, when you accomplish something, you do that. That's part of the blessing. But you know, if you're always leaning away from work, if you're never leaning in and giving it 100%, you never get that satisfaction. You never get that joy out of it. Now, again, I've already said work takes all sorts of different for forms, all sorts of different things that, that we're involved in. But regardless of how work looks, Regardless of whether it pays or not, it is part of God's purpose for your life to do that. That's why, and have you ever noticed this? That's why the people that sit at home, even though they can work, but they get paid from the government to sit at home, or the people that can do a work, but they just don't want to, and they, they sit at home, or... The, and I'll go there, the socialist that wants to take money from the people that are working hard and give it to the people that don't want to work at all. You ever notice how those people are the most miserable people on the planet Earth? You're like, don't point at me. I'm not pointing at anybody. I've literally got my hands down. <laughs> but they are some of the most miserable. Have you met them? Some of the most miserable people. Do you know why? Because they're avoiding one of the very purposes that God has created them. And when you avoid one of the very purposes that God has created you, you will never find God's true purpose or meaning for your life. And you will never experience the fulfillment that comes in knowing that work is a part of what God has created you to do in whatever form that that comes in. And so instead of eschewing it, instead of running away from it, instead of leaning away from it, we need to lean in. Because, and here's the big idea, work isn't just about making a living. It's about making a life worth living. Work isn't just about making a living. It's about making a life worth living. Work in all of its various forms. And again, I, I cannot stress that enough. Do not perceive work just as your nine to five. Don't do that. That is, that is a misunderstanding of, of the concept and the idea of work. But work is a part of the underlying purpose that God has for each and every one of us. And when we don't do it, we will never experience the true life that Jesus Christ said he came to give us. Now, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, the apostle Paul is writing, and he kind of takes what, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, and he updates it a little bit. And he says, whatever you do, work at it with your whole being and do it for the Lord, not for men. Do it for the Lord, not for men. Now, here's why that's important. 
if you only do it for men, and men, by the way, it's a, it's a gender neutral term. It's not something that's like, oh, it's only men. No, it, you know, or you could put it this way, the man. Don't just do it for the man, the boss, the superintendent, the CEO, the manager, whatever. He's, if, if that's what you're doing it for, you will never find enjoyment in that. But if you do it because you're doing it for God, that's when you find the blessing. That's the key. Now, it's really cool because I don't know if you know this or not, but the Bible was not written in English. Um, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in two different languages, Greek, Greek and Aramaic. And so they have to be translated. And so when they're translated, sometimes there's not an exact word. And so people are like, well, it, it means this, roughly this. And so they use sometimes different words. And I want to share with you that phrase, your whole being, how the different translations translate that. Because I think it gives you a better understanding of what that idea is. He's, he's listen. Do it heartily, do it willingly, do it from the soul, do it enthusiastically, do it wholeheartedly. Kind of sounds like we're supposed to give 100%, right? So that's what he's saying. Give everything you have. So here is the natural question. Dave, how do I give 100%? How do I give 100% when I feel underappreciated, overwhelmed, stressed out, and worn down. How in the world do I do that? Anybody here go, yeah, one of those four, or maybe all four of those, you know, that's, that's kind of where I am with work. Anyone, anyone here with me on that? You know, so it's like, like literally, literally you just, you're underappreciated, you're overwhelmed, you're stressed out, and you're worn down. Like, how in the world do I wake up every morning and go back into a place that has worn me down to a nub of myself and give 100%? How in the world do I do that? Okay. It's literally one thing. Place every day of work in God's hands. Place every day of work in God's hands. Now, before you go, oh, so spiritual, just bear with me. <laughs> just bear with me. Place every day of work in God's hands. If you wake up every morning and walk into work believing that the work day, the result, the people around you, the product that you might produce is all dependent upon you, you bear all the weight. And if like most of us, you are not your own boss, you then bear the weight of that boss's appreciation or more likely underappreciation. And so what happens is, is the weight of all of that begins to weigh you down. And so when you wake up in the morning or you take your, maybe, maybe you're like, no, I wake up great. It's the 47 minute drive that I want to shoot somebody by the time I get to work. Actually, I want to shoot somebody before I get out of my subdivision because my neighbor feeds the geese. They're always there. They're pooping everywhere. I just want to kill them. But you begin every day at work by saying, God, you created this. See, isn't that great to be able to do that? God, you created work. You said that work is the path to blessing. And so I'm choosing to believe that in some way, shape, or form, that this day you are going to actually give me a blessing as I give 100% in my work and I leave the results up to you. Now, that does two things. And neither one of them have to do with God. The first thing is, is you are recognizing you have no control. Let me just do this really quickly. Those of you that are sitting close to loved ones, just look at them, look at their eyes. And especially because if you're married, there's probably one of you that is a control freak. So just look at them lovingly and smile and say, you have no control. Now don't laugh maniacally after that because that, 
Hey, you have no control. <laughs> but you relinquish control. The second thing that it does is, you know what it does? It makes you start to look for the blessing. Do you know if you go into work always believing it's a curse, do you know what you're always going to see at work? Curse. You're going to see all the thorns and thistles, right? You're like, yeah, the thorns, that's Teresa next to me. The thorns, that's Bradley over in the other cubicle. Those are the thorns and the thistles. We all have them. But I want to add another layer to this because this is so cool. And I, I'm not, listen, don't, don't be like, we don't do this all the time, but I, every once in a while, it's really cool when, when there's a word in the original translation that just doesn't give it justice in the English, okay? And, and today, there's one of these. And it's, it's actually the word in that verse, commit. Proverbs 16, 3, the first part. Read the second part of it in a minute, okay? This is the English Standard Verse. says, commit your work to the Lord. Probably, if you grew up in church, you've heard this one before. Commit your work to the Lord, and He will make your plan succeed, or, you know, some version of that. But I want you to see, I want you to take that word, that word commit, circle it, underline it, because I want you to understand what that word means. It's the word in the, the, the Hebrew, galal, G-A-L-A-L, galal. And here's what that word means. It means to roll away. That's what it means. To roll away. So what, by the way, Solomon is the writer of Proverbs, by the way, if you're just wondering about that. So Solomon, the guy that writes in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, hey, listen, you should enjoy everything and whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might because you know what? Life is short, so enjoy every minute of it. He then writes in Proverbs, and he says, listen, every time you begin to work, commit it to God. And he says, so here's what you do. You roll it away. So all of that pressure, all of that weight, all of that stuff that falls onto your shoulders, before you begin your work, you go, God, I am rolling it off of me, and I'm putting it onto you. So when you think about it, maybe, maybe it's when you wake up in the morning, maybe it's on your drive-in, maybe you get just to work a little bit early and you sit in the parking lot for five minutes because you're like, I need some roll-away time. And I'm just going to roll away the morning. Like, listen, I'm going to roll away the results to God, I'm going to roll the problems over to God, I'm going to roll the people over to God, I'm going to roll my morning commute over to God, I'm going to roll my boss over to God, and man, he is, he can roll. I'm just going to roll it away. I just roll it unto God. Now here's, it's so cool because you know what? There is a Greek equivalent to that word, which remember, New Testament is Greek and Aramaic. You know when that Greek equivalent to that word is used? It's when Jesus Christ on Easter rose from the grave and the angel showed up. And what did the angel do? He rolled away the stone to show the grave was empty. You see, the action of rolling away isn't like you going, yeah, I'm going to roll it away. The action of you rolling it away is revealing it's not up to you. And it's already been taken care of. It's finished. Even in your work, God has a blessing for you. But until you are willing to go, okay, I can't. But Jesus, you already have. You've finished it. And so all I have to do now is get through the work <laughs> to lean into it, to give it 100% because you've already blessed it. I just need to get to it. And so every day, you need to roll away. And if you need to put that, man, put that in your brain. Put it on a sticky note on top of your visor before you walk into work and roll it down. Okay, commit. Roll away to the Lord everything that I do. Lord, roll it away. Put it away. Give it away. God, you, you've, you've said you've, you've blessed it. You've said there's a blessing on the other side. And I know that work is hard because of sin. But God, I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to get everything that I have because I want to receive the blessing that's on the other side that you have for me. And I'm not going to give it half heart. I'm going to give it everything I have because I want the full blessing, not the half blessing. I want everything that you have for me. And God, you said that you promised that and you've rolled away the stone. And I, oh, I'm ready for this. You know, I think if you start your morning like that, your day may go a little better. It may be different. Now, I'm not going to lie. Here's what is going to happen. I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? Because that's it's kind of my thing. I try to be honest when I'm up here. 
Well, all the time, not just when I... <laughs> I see some of you going, just up there, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any time you try to make a change for the better in your life, this world and everything in it will work against you. It will. So if you're like, Monday, here I come. I'm going to roll away, and I'm just going to, yeah, it's going to be great. You know, you sing that song, if he walked out of the grave, I walk, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. And you walk in, there's going to be a note on your desk from HR that says, we'd like to see you this morning. <laughs> it's just going to happen. I'm just telling you up front, because it will not be easy, because this world is run and overseen by the one who is against you and wants to destroy you and wants to keep you down and wants you to continue to believe that work is evil, there is no blessing outside of the payment, and it doesn't matter how hard you work, you are never going to get ahead, you are always going to be unappreciated, you're always going to feel overwhelmed, you're always going to be stressed out, you're always going to be pushed down, that's just the way it is, suck it up and deal with it. The greatest motivational speech ever. But God goes, no, that is not how I created it. And I love how this verse ends. Roll it away to me, and this is what he does. He says, and he, talking about God, will establish your plans. Other translations say, and he will make your plans successful, and he will grant you success. He will give you the results and the reward. You see, that's the key. And I know it sounds so simple and so spiritual, but can I tell you something? It works. And if you will begin every day at work and roll it away and go, God, listen, and you, listen, here's the thing. I always tell people this because people are like, well, how do you pray? I'm like, you know, I pray to God like I, like I talk to everybody else. And I, I have, I have, I'm unabashed in that because the Bible teaches that we are to talk to God. We're going to have that relationship with God. And so I'm going to talk with God how I talk with other people. That's just, that's just how I talk with God. And so literally, there are times when I talk to God, I'm like, you know what? This really sucks, God. I kind of hate this. This is terrible over here. I don't like this over here. And you process through that, and that's part of the process. And so if you need to start your workday with like, I hate this job. But you said it's a blessing. And God, I can't see it that way. So I'm going to need you to give me a new set of eyes. So I can begin. That's okay. If you need to do that, do that. But I love the fact that God declares with no hesitation, you commit it to me. You put it on my shoulders, and I will make it succeed. There's another great passage in the Scripture that's not in your notes, but we're going to end with that. It's Jesus Christ, and he says these words. For all those who are weary, and worn out, tired, come to me. Take my yoke. That's the idea of kind of partnering up, if you will. Take my yoke on you. For my burden is light. You see, God wants to partner with you in your work. But until you are willing to roll it away, to commit it to him, you're pulling the weight of the world and you were never intended to work that way. So this week, from this point forward, remember, Jesus wants to partner with you and give you success. Father, we thank you so much for your graciousness to us. And God, I know that this is probably going to be a little anti our thought process, but thank you for work. 
now it's a little easier to thank you for it because we understand it a little bit better and how you created it and how you made it and how it's a part of our structure and our DNA and that it's something we need to do to be able to pursue you and experience your purpose and the meaning and, and all the things that you have for us in life. And so God, we thank you for work. God, I pray that every single person here in their minds and their thoughts right now would think about the work that you've given them to do and God, they would thank you for it. Even if it's hard, even if it's through gritted teeth, even, it's, even if it's through a God, I'm supposed to be thankful, but I don't feel like it. But I'm going to start with the words and start moving towards it so that I can experience the blessing that you want to give me through work. Because God, that's how you started it. And, and I know that the process of getting to it has been cursed, but the blessing is still there. And so God, I'm choosing to lean in with everything that I have to give it 100% because I I want the full blessing, not a half blessing. I want the full results, not the half results. And God, I'm going to roll all of that stuff away. Every day as I walk into that workplace, as I sit down at my desk, as I open the door to my office, as I open the door to my car, as I'm driving around, as I sit down behind my computer in my, in my house, my home office, as I pick up my kids out of their cribs, as I begin to teach, whatever it is, God, I pray that we would roll away all of that stuff onto you. We would take on your yoke. We would take on the burden that's lighted. We would work arm in arm, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder with your son, Jesus Christ, to get to the blessing and to be a blessing to those around us in our workspace. Father, we thank you for that. We pray this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.